Hey guys, it's Admin from MarioBestBest.com. I'm here today in Adobe Photoshop CS3. And as you can see, I've already made an Apple style icon. And it's quite easy, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Firstly, put a new file. I'm going to make it 60 by 60 pixels and transparent background. Now I'm going to zoom in. And firstly, I'm going to click here and select the round rectangle tool. With a radius of 10 pixels, I'm going to start from the top corner and bring it down. Now I'm going to right click on shape 1, blend options, check drop shadow, I'm going to set it to 90 degrees, distance about 2, spread about 5%, and size around 3. Now I'm going to have to move this because the shadow is being cut off. Okay, make sure your shadow isn't cut off, otherwise when you uh, create the image it's going to look a bit weird. Alright, we're going to jump back into blending options and we're going to click on gradient overlay. Now we're going to change this, the, we're going to change the colors into the famous blue and dark blue. So first off I'm going to select a lighter blue and then I'm going to select a darker blue for the top half. Excellent. Okay, okay. Okay, so now I'm going to make the rays of light effect. First off, I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to choose the line tool. I'm going to hold shift and make a line directly down the rounded rectangle. Now, the line has to be bigger than the, re the rectangle. Okay. I'm going to clear the layer style. And now I'm going to zoom in a little bit to make it a bit easier. And I'm just going to modify the line slightly and make it a little bit thinner. Apply. Okay. Now, I'm just going to drag shape 2 into the duplicate icon. And then I'm going to slightly rotate the line. Check OK. And I'm going to repeat this process for about four lines. Check OK. Oops. OK. Now, I'm going to hold down Shift and click on Shape 2 while the top shape is still highlighted. And it's going to select all of the shapes. I'm going to hold Control G, or in Mac, it's Command G. And I'm going to group all the lines together. Now I'm just going to keep on repeating this process. I'm going to duplicate the group, and I'm going to slightly move the rays of light. Check OK. Highlight both of the groups. Control G. Duplicate the groups. And then move them slightly. OK. Control G. Duplicate. And move them. And I'm, I'm going to do this until I see, until I like the effect. Okay, so that's about enough. So finally I'm going to group it. You should see group 5. Now, it's looking a little bit cluttered, but that's okay. We're going to click in filter, convert for smart filters, check OK, filter again, blur, radial blur, amount to 100, blur method zoom, and best quality. Now we're going to go back into filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, 0.5 pixels. Okay, you may notice that now the rays of light are actually coming out of the rounded rectangle. That's okay. All we need to do is click back on shape 1, drag into the duplicate icon. We're going to clear the layer style. And now we're going to click on group 5 click on add mask 
and we're going to drag and drop shape 1 into group 5 and you should see this black highlight around it. Now we have to delete shape 1. So click delete, yes, and there you go. It is now inside the rounded rectangle. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit more effect and make it look like the rays of light are coming from the middle. So we're going to click on the smart filter, right click and click blending options. We're going to change the blending mode to darken, opacity, leave it at 100% and we're going to check inner shadow. Then we're going to check normal, white, we're going to put the distance to zero and the size we're going to make uh, that's about right okay and from here we can change the opacity but I like it at 100 okay so now we can zoom out and as you can see we've got the the basic effect and it's looking pretty good now we're going to put the famous gloss. So we're going to add a new layer. I'm going to zoom in to make it easier. I'm going to click on the vectors and click the ellipse tool and make an ellipse over it to around where the the hole is. And we're going to reduce the opacity to around 35. Okay. And already you can see that it has that famous gloss. However, it's coming over the sides. So, what we have to do is first off, press filter, convert for smart filters, click OK, then add a layer, a mask layer. Then we're going to repeat what we did for the rays of light. So, I'm going to duplicate shape one. Clear the layer styles and then we're going to drag and drop it to shape 1. Now we're going to delete shape 1, copy 2. Yes. And there you have it. So, that is our gloss. And of course, if you're not happy with the actual size of the gloss, you can always use the move tool with transform with the show transform controls check. Okay, so now we're going to zoom out and just look at our work of art. And as you can see, it's looking pretty good already. Now, the final touch is to add your icon. Now, of course, add your icon below the gloss. So, in a layer below the gloss. This way, it uh, it makes it look like the icon is encapsulated in the gloss. And of course, we're going to just reduce the opacity of this just a little bit more. And then we're going to add our icon. And I'm going to put an M for my repo space. And of course, you won't be able to see that. And I'm just going to make it a little bit pre- Blending options, drop shadow, and we'll add a pattern overlay. All right, and of course you can add the circle around it. Simply hold shift while using the ellipse tool. Opacity at 100%. Right click blending options. The fill opacity to zero, the stroke checked, three pixels, white, okay. And we can zoom out. And there you have it. Very simple, um, looks very fancy, it looks like an Apple style icon, um, it just looks great.